Welcome back to the studio. I am so excited to show you how to paint the super beginner friendly mushroom. Um, so we're going to dive in real fast. I'm actually going to just dive into the colors real quick. So I'm going to be using a lizard and crimson, which I find is just kind of the most popular watercolor red to get. I have ultramarine blue here. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. I also have sap green, which is a neutral, slightly warm green and Windsor lemon, um, but it is a cool tone, very pale yellow. So I have some mostly clean water and I have a rag that I dab my paintbrush off of. This is very important. I highly recommend having that as well. I will be using a size six brush and a size three brush as well as probably a size 10 brush. These are all round brushes, which is my preferred technique. So as you can see, I've already drawn out the outline. I'm going to lighten it a little bit. If you would like this exact outline, um, I will have my reference image linked below, but if you would like this outline, um, you can find that on my website, which I will have linked down below as well as just kind of a painting template, a coloring page, whatever you want to call it, um, that will be linked down below and you can use it however many times you wish. Um, but I'm just going to lighten it now with this kneaded eraser. I'm going to just gently roll over the surface to pick up any excess graphite. I don't want that in my paint, but I also don't want the outline to be kind of the main star of the show. I'm using that as my base. Oh, I did not mention, I will be using masking fluid. The masking fluid I prefer, I don't have. Um, I just have, I'll put the name of it on the screen. I have this, which I do not recommend. The fluid is good, the tool is not. So I will be just using a kind of unconventional technique to put it down. <laughs> um, but that's kind of what works for us right now. That's where we're at. I'm just taking some regular dish soap and a brush that I do not love. Whoop. And I'm going to stick it in the dish soap. And then in the masking fluid. Now the dish soap will protect my brush from the masking fluid so it will not um, ruin it. There we go. You can see that sheen right there. That is the soap. I'm actually going to dip it a little farther. I tend to be generous because I don't want to have to buy more brushes. Um, but I'm going to use this technique to apply masking fluid to this mushroom. The mushroom on the left, I'm going to do without masking fluid just to show you how you can use, how you can just work around this. Um, but e it is easier to do it with the masking fluid. Okay, so just to show you again, I've got the masking fluid. And I'm just going to take that and stick that in all of these little holes that I've created. Now, if you do not have masking fluid, don't worry. Um, on the other mushroom, I'll show you kind of the technique that I would use when I either don't have masking fluid on hand or I don't want to go grab it. Whatever the case may be, for whatever reason, I'm not using masking fluid. Um, you can still make it work. So don't fret if you don't have the masking fluid. Hi, baby. Mommy took to eight foot to turn green in, in his bed. Is it? Is your light green? Yeah. Okay, you can get up and go play in the nursery. So if you are using masking fluid, don't worry about being super specific. The great thing about working with something that is natural and organic is that it uh, is going to be irregular. All right, so we're, real quickly, we're going to kind of create some of our main colors. Um, so I'm gonna take some of this yellow, which again is Windsor Lemon, I believe. And I'm going to use that to warm up our alizarin crimson. So again, this is kind of a cool toned red, um, but I want there to be a little bit of a gradient. So this is kind of gonna be the main red that I use right here, but there are parts of the mushroom, if you look at it very carefully, you will see that parts of that it are darker, like kind of towards the tip, the tip, the very top, the crown. Um, and then towards the edge, it's a little bit more yellow. So I'm going to have you know, this big section of the main body, but I also want to include sections that are already mixed a little warmer, a little more yellow and a little more red. Now to that, I'm also going to take what I already have on my brush. So that's a little bit of this alizarin crimson and some Windsor lemon. I'm trying to 
trying to not completely dirty this up, but I'm doing a terrible job. <laughs> Um, and then I'm gonna add some sap green to it. And the wonderful thing is that when we kind of dilute it out a little bit, let me see if I can show you. On my, let's do it on my test paper. I think it might be a little too something, but if we kind of put it on the test paper real quick and dilute it, and see so we've got this nice color that I think will work really well for the stem. It's a little too green, I think, so I'm gonna add a little bit more red. Kind of bring some of that creaminess back in. That's a little more what I'm going for. And then for the green of the grasses, I'm actually just gonna be adding that in. Um, by just adding more green, maybe a little bit of blue, maybe a little more red, etc. So those are, that's our color mix right now. I have the blue here in case I want it. Um, and then just in case you um, don't have a sap green, again, you could use ultramarine and yellow and red and just kind of mix it until you get kind of this brown shade. If you have, if it turns out a little too gray, um, add a little bit more red in. Okay, so here we have our mushroom that we are focusing on. This is the one with the masking fluid. It's probably still a little tacky. Um, but I'm going to work on this section. It's a little smaller, so I'm cheating a little bit. But um, I'm just going to show you kind of first what I would do. I have a clean brush. I'm going to dip it into some clean-ish water. And I'm going to just allow, put the water down, allowing it to just sit on all the sections that do not have all the sections kind of in between the spots that we've created. This doesn't have to be perfect. Again, if you accidentally cover a spot, that's fine. It's gone now. Don't worry about it. And I'm going to, the water is kind of pooled up a little bit because I'm working quickly and I don't want the, the paper to absorb the water too quickly. All right, so I don't know if you can see that sheen here but I'm allowing the water to pool a little bit because I want it to stay very wet. Um, this paper does not stay wet super long. It has a decent window, um, but not the best. If you have arches or um, stone hedge, it's going to stay wet a little bit longer. And so you have a little bit more time to kind of fuss. Um, this paper, I, you just don't have that window quite as much. So we're going to move very quickly and just try to cover the whole area. And you can see just has that glossy sheen there. And see, I'm just kind of dispersing some water, connecting them all together and just trying to get all the spots or all the places between our white spots. And again, if you accidentally cover one up, no big deal. Nobody's gonna care or no. So you just, just covered that one. It's gone now, it's fine. Okay, so that is covered now. The whole piece is covered. I'm going to dab my brush off on my paper towel over here. I already have my paint mix and I'm actually going to now kind of dab my brush in, dab it off on the paper towel and I'm literally picking some of this excess water up. I wanted it to bubble to make sure that it all stayed wet. And some of you might find that your paper is already dry in some areas or close to dry. So if you kind of have it bubbled, bubbled up, you can kind of avoid <laughs> some of that stress. So I'm just kind of picking up some of the excess now. Now we're ready. So I'm gonna take some of that kind of mid-tone red so not the deeper or more blue tone or and not the more orangey. And I'm just gonna start tapping that in. This is where like all the stress that you just went through to get everything good and even just totally pays off because this is so soothing and fun. You don't wanna have, I'm not, I have not dipped my paintbrush back into any water because there's plenty of water on the surface of my piece. 
Now why bother doing this? Why not just take your brush and paint wet on dry? I really like to have, especially if there's a beautiful gradient in my subject, I like to show that off. So because there is a beautiful gradient here with this mushroom, if you look kind of at my reference image, you'll see that there are, it's more golden at the tips, but it fades so seamlessly that you don't even, you can't see kind of where it comes and where it goes. It's just, it's there and then it's gone. I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. So my size three, not necessary, but I just feel like I have a little bit more control. Okay, slightly different angle so you can really see what I'm doing. I'm just continuing to add it in here. And now that I can see a little bit better, it's not just water on top of a surface, I can get in a little tighter onto where I've drawn the spots. And I'm just dabbing pigment in like this. I still have not added any more water to my brush. This is just pure pigment. There's plenty of water on the paper itself. And then in a moment, so this is still kind of that base color. In a moment, I'm gonna start going in a little bit more specifically with some of our deeper red and our warmer red. Taking in some of this orangey tone and I'm just going to tap this in here. Some of it started dry, that's okay, a little bit. We haven't been working on it very long, so a little bit of a swipe across will activate it nicely. And this will give us a nice smooth gradient because everything that the paint is touching right now is currently wet. So that will allow it to kind of spread. Cleaning my brush off a bit, I'm going into my Pure Alizarin Crimson, mixing that in a little bit more with our mid-tone just to deepen it a touch. And then we're gonna focus that at the top. And I'm just carefully tapping that in. I don't have a lot of excess water on my brush. I've been tapping it off on my uh, rag or paper towel every single time I wash it off so that I don't have a lot of excess water. Wiping it back and forth a little bit here, encouraging a little bit of movement will help encourage the paint to bleed together nicely and to blend. Okay, it's not showing, at least in the viewfinder, um, not showing as yellow as it looks in person, so as orange. So I'm taking a little bit of just that lemon yellow hue on a mostly dry brush and I'm just kind of tapping this in here. That was a little too much. Just to kind of encourage that a little bit more. Here again. And that's how you do it without masking fluid. So see, not hard at all. Um, but not as easy as what we're about to do. So now I'm going to take the same brush that we used. This is the masking fluid method. And we're gonna basically repeat it, but we're gonna do it lazy. <laughs> so I'm going to cover this whole thing, but I can like move back and forth because the masking fluid will protect the paper underneath. Looks like not all the masking fluid was dry. Make sure your masking fluid is dry. <laughs> this could be a disaster, but we'll see. The more you know. I'm gonna go all the way down to almost the edge. And then I'm now switching to our more orangey tone. And I am adding that in right at the edge. Careful to get our edge right where we want it. Going back in with our deeper colors. Just working up that value until it's as deep as I want it to be. I don't want a, I want a nice, deep, rich 
color. I can go back in and do another pass. Um, with this one, it would be super annoying. This side, it wouldn't be as big of a deal. But I still, if I can, let's just get her done, right? And by having those wet paints touch each other, you can see how it's so easy to get them to blend. Okay, cleaning off my brush, I'm gonna go in with almost just the Windsor Lemon. Mix it in just with just a touch of our more orangey mixture. So it's just, it's kind of like a dirty yellow and I'm just tapping that in here really to make sure that that, that gets uh, put in here properly. It's nice and bright. We'll do that, let's do the stems. I'm going to just kind of do the under part of this mushroom. Excuse me, my mushroom terminology is rusty. So right now I'm just, so this is the section almost like a lip. Well, it is a lip. It's the lip of the top of the mushroom. And so this section that I'm painting right now is more in shadow. It's in a deeper shadow. So we're just getting that nice gradient. Just wetting everything with a dirty brush. Kind of getting in some of these creases to exaggerate that and kind of make that a little more obvious. Again, being very careful around the edges and a little more free in the middle. And then I'm just grabbing some more of the brown that we already mixed and I'm tapping that inside. And we'll go back again with a detail brush and add some of the ribbing in here. All right, cleaning my brush off just so I can start fresh and crisp. I'm grabbing just a touch of our brown tone. I'm gonna work in layers. So you don't really wanna work at the section that's touching what you just worked on. Um, so I cheated a little bit and I did these two pretty close to each other, closer really than you'd want to. Um, so I don't necessarily wanna work on this section or either of these sections while this paint is still wet. Um, it'll just kind of mess up some of this natural gradient and shadow that we already have. So I've already kind of put this section in here where it's a little deeper towards the stem than it is at the edges. I want to keep that gradient so I don't want to mess with it. So I'm just going to bounce around a little bit more and I'm going to this is a little bit darker in value than I want it to be. So I'm just taking some water, dabbing my brush off and cleaning it off again or drying it off again. I'm just going to pull it down. I want that to be nice and creamy still. I'm going to have the shadows on the left, like my reference image. So I'm going to, while this is all still wet, tap in some deeper values, focusing it on the left hand side. Because it's all still wet, it will bleed beautifully, in theory. I'm gonna... Too much. here to get that shadow. So I think it's safe to work over here. So I might need to do another layer underneath here, which is fine. But I do want this to be, I want it to be in shadow, but a little lighter than over here. Wet brush. No more water, just adding pigment in here. 
So we want to keep our shadows consistent. Now you may have noticed already that this piece does not have this mushroom that I'm working on right now does not have a reference. It's not in my reference image. Um, I drew him from kind of my head, kind of like studying this style of mushroom. And so I wanted to show you how we can, you can kind of take what you see in a reference image and use it to kind of create your own repetition. Um, because nature has laws that it follows, it has a lot of repetition. And so you're just taking what you already know, which is that we've got a shadow on the left hand side, we've got this creamy color, and we can make another one just following some of these same steps. And we're going to deepen at the base to help it look like it's all nestled in here. can add some imperfections if we want. We've got that over here. So we can add those in to make it look a little more intentional. I'm going to, there we go, that gradient was bothering me. But this isn't reading quite right. I want this to be a little deeper just to make it look like this is behind, is a little farther away from me than the stem. So in order to do that, all I have to do is deepen it a little. A little bit more. And see how that just pops that forward? That is drying pretty quickly, so I'm actually going to move on to this one now. So this has, in order to make this section pop out, I'm going to add that shadow here. Make this visually come forward. Add a little bit of something here. All right, that's definitely gonna need another layer. Let's pull this up, some of the colors sneaking beyond where I want it to be. So I'm actually gonna take a little piece of bath tissue and if it's just going too far, we just dab it so that it's dry. Water, or the pigment doesn't travel across dry, anything that's dry, dry paper. All right, taking a my large brush now, I'm actually going to zoom out so I show you kind of how I do this. I know we still have some work to do in just this brown color, so I don't want to totally get rid of it, but I'm going to kind of create this base for the moss that I have down here. Um, so I'm actually going to take the sap green, I'm going to pull it down into our brown because I want it to be nicely desaturated. Again, if you don't have a green, just mix your blue and your yellow and you'll be good to go. Take a little more red. Now it's too brown, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, this is my larger brush, my size 10, and I'm going to just dance it around kind of this horizon line type thing that I've got going on. And then it's, it's very wet, you can see. It's very, very pigmented. And then we'll soften it in just a minute. Maybe add a little bit more green. Dab that in here. I'm not quite letting these two touch and kind of explain that a little bit more here shortly. A little more water. The 
This is a pretty thirsty brush. You could use a quill if you have one um, or a mop brush. I'm just gonna, gonna tap that around. I really like kind of this diagonal. I'm gonna add, um, dip it in the water and then I just tapped it off on the side. And I'm going to now kind of pull some of this down. So I've allowed these two to bleed, but I'm trying to keep the majority of the pigment towards the top. I'm gonna clean this off and set it to the side. We'll pull that out again in a little bit. I've got my smaller brush going back into our green and a little bit of our red in here just to again keep it nice and deep. And I'm just tapping this the very top of my mouth. Also going to like leave the section just to get a little more texture. See how that adds a little bit more something extra. And I'm even going to see how it's pooling towards the bottom. I'm actually going to tip my paper up just a little bit. I'm just going to push my hand underneath it. That will keep that will um, allow gravity to help me keep everything uh, going up top. And tap this here. And then same thing here where I'm just, I'm tapping kind of outside of my own space a little bit just to add a little bit of interest and texture. I like that this section is a little more brown. It's kind of interesting. This is already dry. Oh, dang. So it hasn't been, it's probably still a little damp, so I think it'll be fine but that's a little frustrating. So this part is not, so I'm gonna take advantage of and kind of get that ready. And then since it is a little bit dry, I'm just gonna wet my brush, tap it off, tap off any excess without like kind of drying it and just kind of bring that down cleaning it off, wiping it off on a paper towel. So it's just a damp brush. I'm just gonna run this under here again, just to keep this edge a little cleaner, a little smoother. Those like sharp edges that we have down here, not my favorite, wiping it off again. And water and then paper towel, and I'm just smoothing the edge. Now that I know that so much of the water kind of went south, if you will, um, I would definitely, if I was doing it again, have my hand under here already. I hope I've got some blooming. It's okay. So washing my brush off, dabbing it off on the towel, and just running it under here, just to soften everything a little bit. I'll join those together in a moment, but I want some distinction there. And I'm gonna come and go a little bit with my, I'm gonna go really more into the red and kind of brownie. going to take a little bit of our blue and I'm going to mix it in just a touch with kind of what we already have so that it's very very toned down I don't want a lot I'm even going to dab my brush off I'm just going to pull that in here just a little I see like a hint of it over here and I love it so we're going to do more of it <laughs> Um, now I'm going to allow this to dry and I'm going to pull in my size three and I'm going to clean it because you want to miss. I'm going to start pulling in the brown. So things that were forgotten a little bit. I'm even going to just 
barely we keep it deeper on the edges barely have any pigment in the middle that'll again help it look like it's coming forward having that little bit of highlight and then do the same thing on the other side where it's like it's there and then I'm just barely bringing it in with a little bit of water now I'm going to put a little bit on my brush I have a mostly dry brush I have a little bit of that brown on here and I'm gonna start working on just hints of these. I could probably use a smaller brush even. Maybe I will. Dry brush. All right, if things look or sound a little bit different it's because it's the next day, um, my kids were up, so I left this to dry a little bit, which is actually kind of perfect because I really wanted this to get nice and dry before I was tempted to mess with it. Um, since we, since this is all dry now, if yours is not, you can kind of skip this part and I kind of move on to the next section, but um, it, this will be pretty easy. What we're basically going to do is I'm going to take this green tone that we've already been using, but a little bit more watered down. Let me scoot this over so you can see what I'm grabbing. So this green brown mixture that we already have, it's a little more watered down. I want it to kind of fade into the background. So allowing it to just be very loose and quiet. Now we already know that everything falls down. So I'm going to lift up the paper with my hand just like this. And just kind of allow those two to come and meet. So same thing, very, very wet brush and just pulling that in. I'm even just going to overlap this section a little bit, make that the differentiation a little bit softer and then a little hint of it here. I'm going to kind of allow it to disappear here. All right, and that gives us a nice kind of layer tucked in. We will be going back in and adding some of this detail in with kind of like our pine needles and stuff like that, um, but that will be even darker and layered on top. So I'm going to allow all of that to dry. I am going to just kind of assess real quick. Oh yes, that's right. We ended by adding some of this texture in here. So I'm going to pick up my, what size brush is this? Triple zero? Oh my. I'll have something similar linked down below. This was a gift. It's a small detail brush, a size three, size two um, should work as well. You'll just have to kind of adjust the amount of pressure that you're putting down based on the size of brush that you have. So if you have a smaller brush, you have a little bit more freedom to push more heavily and you'll still have a nice small line. If you have a um, larger brush, you'll just need to be a little bit more delicate and really kind of hold farther back on your brush so that the strokes are still nice and light and delicate. So then, I mean, the nice thing about these small brushes is that you're able to be a little bit more lazy. So I'm going to adjust the camera angle, zoom you in a little bit, um, and then as this is drying, we'll work on some detail up top. All right, I'm working with, there's a lot of water, well, there's not a lot of water and there's not a lot of pigment on this brush. It's pretty dry. I'm really just barely adding that little touch of paint in here. And the goal is to kind of allow it to fan out. I already have some irregularities along the edge here with just the lines that I drew. And so I'm kind of using those as my base. If you ever feel like you have too much pigment on, just kind of wipe it off on your paper towel or rag, whichever you have. And I'm allowing the brush to not even touch the paper like half the time. So I have very little pigment on my brush and it's almost dry, just enough pigment so that it will move. And I'm just pulling just a little bit. These lines even were too big for my preference. Just a little stripey pulling. If you're struggling with this, grab a scrap piece of paper and just kind of work in these flicks and try and just get them as light as possible. It's okay if they skip around a little bit. Um, 
if you find that you're like leaving blotches, probably need less water. So dab it off a little bit on your brush or on your paper towel. <laughs> and can see like that was just too much. So just very, I find that it helps if I move my, my whole brush up a little bit and then it's just little dragging motions, very soft and fast. And then I'm curving them ever so slightly to get more of a three dimensional look, which I am enjoying. I'm gonna do kind of the same thing, need to dry off my brush just a touch. Grab a little pigment, wipe it off. Um, while we're down here, I'm going to, with this little brush in hand, just, I could probably go for a bigger brush actually, but let's just work on this shadow a little bit more. Just add another pass over it. problem with using this tiny brush, since it doesn't disperse a ton of water, it's hard to get that wet to wet effect where the nice even gradient, it's not impossible by any means, but it's just a little harder because it doesn't disperse as much water and so it dries more quickly. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how that is looking right now. We're pretty close to when I want to take off this masking fluid. As you can see, there's the, it just, it's looking kind of funny. Um, but I want to, I think I'm gonna add the details in for just some of the foliage down here. We're gonna use just the same colors that we've been mixing, that brown and that green, um, and just pull from there and deepen it and work in a more concentrated way. So I'm gonna zoom you out real quick so you can see my palette as well. All right, I'm back to my three and I'm just going to, with a damp brush, kind of mix up some of this here. And just Go in because my brush isn't too wet. I should have a good chunk of pigment on my hands or on my on the brush itself. There we go. Maybe that's a little better. It's looking a little bit red. So I'm gonna add a little more green to it. And if I really need to deepen it a little bit more, although I think that's going to work. I don't want it to be too, I don't want it to take too much attention. I just want to have a little more detail down here. And I'm starting hard and going light. Pushing down a little farther, picking it up as I go. I actually love how this breaks this section here, but I am gonna keep it light. So even though it breaks, we can have kind of some, I don't know, that fun dance a little bit, but it won't be too distracting. Okay, pulling in a little bit more green, just on the side here. Bringing that in. 
I'm going to do this one in that deeper green color. Hardly be able to tell, but a careful observer will pick up on the difference. But they don't even need to because your eye kind of does it automatically and sees them as cohesive. But it just adds a little something interesting to be close, but not quite. I'm going to add a little more green. If you're working off of the digital download, you can probably see a little bit better than I can see what I should be, <laughs> what I sh where the lines should be. Um, I can't see as much anymore with my pencil lines, so I'm just kind of guessing. Um, but the nice thing about nature, as you've heard me say before, is that you can be a little more free, a little more wild with it, and it won't matter. A little more careful. So I've wiped down my brush, wiping it off on paper towel, going in and again, a little more brown, um, a little bit lighter because it's going to be some background stuff. A little more green. I don't want it too close to the color we have already on our mushroom. Don't want it to disappear within it. And you can see we're breaking out of this space up here. Um, anything that you do in one section, you want to repeat it somewhere else or it will look like you made a mistake. If you do it multiple times, it looks like it was intentional. So if you ever do make a mistake like that, like it goes beyond the line that you had originally intended um, or it's just not looking right, repeat it. And suddenly you'll look like a genius and not like a goofball. Okay, I like how wild that allows it to be. Um, now it's time to take off our masking fluid. I'm going to use this Mono Zero eraser. Um, any eraser will do. I do recommend a white eraser. Um, be careful, it can still um, smudge some of the paint and move that around, um, but it's pretty easy to do and usually doesn't cause any problems. So I'm going to do a little bit of wash on this left hand side because we have our shadows here and so it doesn't really make sense for that to not have a shadow. What is that? Oh, that's a something I didn't end up filling in so I'm just going to... There, make that disappear. Okay, back to our mushroom. Quick wash or glaze. It's a glaze. I think I've been saying wash, but it's it's called a glaze. <laughs> Over this half, including the white spots, and it needs to be light. So not we don't want to lose the fact that those are white, but we're just kind of putting them in a little bit of a shadow to help make the rest of this look a little bit more three-dimensional and realistic. This is what will take your paintings from good and beginner to really quite nice. Just kind of having that on that half allows that to the other section to kind of brighten up. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but it is really giving some good sophistication. And just like we talked about with the trunk, I'm going to add just a little bit on this side, not a lot but just to give it a slightly rounded effect. And I'm not massaging my brush over it and over and you know, like moving it back and forth a ton because I don't want to reactivate the paint that's underneath. I just want to get a little bit of a shadow onto that pure white. And I'm gonna do the same thing on our other mushroom here.
only obviously there's not as much to do, so it's going to kind of get this section. See how that just softens that a little bit? Makes it look a little bit more realistic. All right, and I think we're going to call that good. I, I would consider adding a background to this, um, but I don't think I'm going to do that, at least not today. Um, if I did, it would be kind of a dusty blue color. Maybe I will do it after all. <laughs> um, some of it lean a little more green, some of it lean a little more blue, and maybe even pull in some more of the browns, almost like hinting at what's in the background. Um, let's see. I hope that you enjoyed creating this little painting with me. If you did or you tried it, please sure to let me know in the comments down below or on Instagram or via email. And until next time, happy painting.